Hi, Melody. It's so great to meet you. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background and your journey to Cadillac. I started off on the communications and public relations side about 10 years ago. And uh, GM, General Motors, was a client of mine. Uh, and at, at one point, after working with them for, for a year between bankruptcy and IPO, they came calling to ask if I would come work for them full time. So about eight months ago, I moved my family from Austin, Texas to Detroit, Michigan, mm. um, where it's a little bit colder. And I started my journey with Cadillac. How do you feel that your background prepared you for your role today, which is now director of brand and um, reputation for Cadillac? Well, I think that my, um, my background's a, a pretty simple one, to be completely honest. I think communications is pretty key to anything. I mean, you talk about a relationship, you talk about business, um, you talk about a, a charity. It doesn't really matter what you're talking about. Communications is really key. You've got to be able to talk to people. You've got to be able to write. You've got to be able to communicate. So I think that was the basis and foundation of my career, and that led me to where I am today. And that is in trying to bring Cadillac back to tier one luxury status as an automaker and bring it back as the premier American luxury brand. What are some of the things that Cadillac is trying to do to still stay relevant today? And do you think it's easier or harder for Cadillac, especially with its rich history? I think that heritage is something that you should draw upon. I mean, when you have one as rich as we do as Cadillac, um, it's something that we can you know, use to our advantage. But I think it's also important not to get stuck in nostalgia because when you spend so much time looking backward, you're not looking forward. So our goal now is to look forward and sort of develop the next chapter of Cadillac, and that is to reach uh, people that we haven't traditionally um, reached, and that's people uh, that are you know, younger, um, professional women, which is why we're here today at the Forbes Women's Summit. We're trying to reach demographics that don't necessarily even consider Cadillac when they're buying a vehicle. I'm also confident that we can retain that very American spirit to us, you know, because I think we reach a different customer than our competitors. We reach a, a certain entrepreneurial uh, spirit, people who don't necessarily think they've made it because they're just always, they're always arriving. Never stop arriving is kind of our motto around there. And I think that's kind of the American spirit, right? Because even if you fall, even if you succeed, why not invent yourself and do something else? Who cares if you made your first 500 million doing something? Go do something else and make another 500 million, right? That's the kind of customer that Cadillac wants to reach. As a woman who is a director in a male-dominated industry, what does power look like to you? And what does that mean to you personally? You know, it's pretty simple for me, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit back to my Texan roots here for a second, but for me, power is um, seeing something that needs fixing and fixing it. It's really as simple as that. I don't think that um, it, it's not about politics or your ability to navigate an environment that's complex. I think it's just about fixing a problem, um, and when you have, when you have the ability and, and wherewithal to do so, that's power to me. What are some changes that you've seen in the industry since you've entered? Um, changes for women, especially positive, negative, and do you have any stories or anecdotes you'd like to share with us? Well, I mean, I think the fact that I was hired, uh, that I was recruited, and that I moved to Detroit is a, is a testament to the fact that the auto industry is shifting just a little bit. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard for, for me to even think of an industry that's not really male-dominated, so I wouldn't say the auto industry is that much different than other ones, but I think that bankruptcy changed General Motors and the Detroit auto industry significantly, and I think that there is a, a very serious and deep look at changing the way that we think, um, that we develop solutions to problems, and the way we hire and recruit. Now that you're in a leadership role, what, what's some advice that you would give to young women? My advice would be to make yourself uncomfortable every once in a while. Test yourself, ask yourself if you're comfortable, and if you are, then it's time to do something different. You know, expand your horizons, learn something new, go ask for a project that you may never have asked for. Don't get too comfortable with what you're doing. If you, if you are, then you're not learning. Were there any formidable events or challenges in your life personally that you faced that you feel prepared you to become the woman that you are today? I think having my first child was a really big deal for me. I think it was, you know, I've, I've always been very, or considered myself pretty, pretty type A um, and, and able to sort of control my life and, and manage it fairly well from a time perspective and a priority perspective, but having a a child totally changed that and that was for the first time when I realized that 
uh, being a working mother was a whole different ball game. Um, but it's taught me so much about how to juggle and how to prioritize and what really is important in life. Right. Let's go back to Cadillac and what you guys are doing. What are your hopes and plans for Cadillac as a brand? You know, the vision for the brand, like I said earlier, was to, to bring it back to the top American luxury brand that it used to be. Um, you know, people always are still to this day say that it's the Cadillac of refrigerators or the Cadillac of insurance plans. Well, we want to be the Cadillac of Cadillac again, you know, and we aren't there, um, you know, after a, a, a couple of decades where really honestly and frankly, um, the German auto companies came in and beat us on our own turf. We want that turf back. So I think that's really important. Secondly, um, we want to be the car, like I said, that uh, the, the youth of our age and the, the young women of our age are considering. That's a major goal for me. Third, I want to be a global brand. I want to be considered not only in the U.S. and Canada, but in places like China where we are growing rapidly, the Middle East, South America even one day. I think we've got to be seen uh, as a true global player in order to be successful here.